welcome back to New Girls on the Block. This week we're going to be getting into our week. We're going to be talking about the De Jeffrey Dahmer documentary and we're going to be getting into our wellness segment. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So the first top, well, I guess we can start off with how your week was. So Okay, so yours? my week has been good. Just working, you know, I started my new job yes, recently. Yes, congrats. Thank you. I love it there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've just been working during the week, um, working on some stuff for, oh, I had a lash plan. I'm still holding on to my little lash business. Girl, I don't yeah. care for her, like, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, just working, doing some lashes. I hung out with my sister, went to David Buster's a few times. Mm -hmm. They happy hours lit, girl. Girl, I'm going to need to come. It's One like five dollars for Let like weeks. Yes, because, girl, I got like two shots and some food, and it came up to $17. Girl! So, <laughs> Hey, next that's time a, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. So, that's yeah, nice. but my week has been pretty chill. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Um, girl, you know, Rick, it's time. It's so. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to let them know that it is October second. Yes. Rent was due, of course, on the first. I paid mine, and <laughs> that's yeah. That's it. Rent is rent. No. That's for sure. But um, that's nice. My week was slow. I worked. I'm trying to remember. And if I can't remember, nothing major must have happened. Yeah. So, um, except I went on Saturday. I went to some event called uh, Knights of the Jack in Calabasas. Mm -hmm. How was that? Um, I feel like, okay, I don't have any kids. My sister has kids. I went with her and it was fun. It was like a nice family event. I went with like all my family, but I was just like, okay, first of all, the tickets are like 40 something dollars. Mm -hmm. Is it like a light show like they do during Christmas or is it just like a regular like pumpkin patch? Like? It's similar to a light show, but it's not as popping as, oh. as a Christmas light show. And Christmas light shows, you can go for free yeah. most of the time. Yeah, because so, I like the one at Griffin Park. Yeah, no so I'm like, okay, we paid this money to walk, what, like two miles and seeing carved. Y'all really walking? Just, girl, yes. We were walking two miles. Clutches <laughs> pearls. <laughs> we were walking two miles and, I mean, I feel like it's really good for kids and it's good for like kids to see and run around and play and see like the pumpkins and see the different car I guess they had carved pumpkins designed as like animals and oh okay that. yeah so like artwork it was mm -hmm. like a little art installation for the kids yeah so I was like when me and my fiance went and we were just like <laughs> and we just like walk it them kids. <laughs> <laughs> for real though we were just like okay we here as yeah. a family let's just enjoy it and yeah so overall I won't be back, and that's, know, that's that. Right. But hey, it's an experience, and I experienced it, I guess. So yeah, yeah that's our weekly segment. Yes. We didn't. Do, it wasn't too much craziness. We just yeah, my week away. wasn't too exciting. Yeah, just been the usual been annoyed by guys yeah. working, trying yeah. to make money. I feel that. Yeah, so, yeah. No. So this week I have been catching up on a lot of my TV shows. Yeah, like um. I watched the new Marilyn Monroe documentary. Oh, so that gonna, was good. Yeah, I still gonna watch that. Um, I finished up the Jeffrey Dahmer show, and I know that I had like a lot of controversy around it. Yeah, but I agree. Have you got a chance to watch it? No, I okay. I got the chance to, but I chose not to. <laughs> you didn't take that chance. I didn't take the chance to watch it. But a lot of people were telling me like, okay, it's not about you know. I mean. Of course, it's black trauma. It's like yeah. it's a lot of stuff that's tied into it. But if you watch it, it's like a perspective thing. If you watch it from a, a perspective of like, okay, it's showing how these people were able to manipulate people and like uh -huh. the signs of serial killers. Not like, okay, that's a play. But I feel like with a show like that being put out and everybody idolizing a character like that, mm -hmm. it's gonna cause more people to I idolize know. that and wanna follow in the footsteps. Because yeah. that happened, what, in like the 80s and 90s? Yeah, I think the 80s. And 
the kids now at this age like we didn't even know about him like yeah that. so and i like, like true crime but i didn't really know the detail yeah because they got a girl they got in detail with yeah. the kids and everything oh see and i feel like that is just causing more upper yeah more trauma and but more opportunity for people to act on like okay i want to be like because oh, yeah and then yeah. you can imagine that like they actually was interesting because we were talking about it earlier now mm -hmm. that i think about it the ending of the show, they were critiquing like how um, when you put these people on platforms, they become idolized mm -hmm. and everything. But I'm like, okay, were they showing that to us to show us not to do that? And they also had a clip where they show him because when he got arrested, he basically said that one of the things that inspired him, he read a comic book about Ed Gein, which is another serial killer. Wow. See and his dad who didn't really want to take accountability, he was just like, why it's like it's a problem with our culture at mm -hmm. large because why can a kid go and get a comic book about a serial killer? Yeah. And then they showed how Ed Gein did things that kind of Jeffrey Dahmer pulled from yeah. in the See. way he was killing people. So it kinda of influenced him to continue that and wow. stop showcasing how like toxic our media could be but again by you guys making this big wide scale show yeah, are you guys they, not doing the same thing yeah wouldn't that's they think that thing. that's influencing people as well as the yeah. comic book that he read like and, and the crazy thing is like on twitter people like women and oh i would have been a, i would have got killed by him because he just like they like look at him as a sex symbol kind of and looking at him is like oh he's attractive so i would have been stupid enough i feel to like they looking at evan peters but no they were using jerry Dahmer's jail photo oh, <laughs> the, real, the real jeffrey yes, not evan w peters would a real jeffrey Dahmer please stand up <laughs> like they were using his real no, jail no that picture. man looks crazy yeah and that's he what literally I, looks crazy like i went across the street like, yeah, yeah him and that's how you know that this is it's it's idolization. It's not yeah. even it's not even that they think. I'm sure it's not even that they think that he's attractive. Like if they seen this man, they probably wouldn't think that. But being that he's like, they it's, made this. Yeah, this big yeah. fuss around. It's probably like celebrity culture where it's just like all of a sudden you think these men are cute, handsome, and Jeffrey Dahmer ain't got even he even got the money because he's yeah. Like, but but y'all just got the. What the cloud do right? for cloud girl do exactly. it for cloud because that's crazy it is that like, man looks crazy he does and it's just it just shows like that was a sign for me like okay this is seeming kind of weird yeah that, and that was a, another sign that made me like okay i'm not gonna watch this show yeah and the families have come out and asked people not to watch it they didn't yeah. agree with it because they it was re-traumatizing them and that's why i was talking to my sister about when we were watching it and just constantly reminding her like that these are real people who are still alive yeah. who still feel the effects there's somebody who lost their child there's people who lost their cousins their yeah. brothers like mm -hmm. he literally did something to a 14 year old so that family if they have siblings the same age they would be in their 30s and 40s yeah having See, to relive the shit like that's, it's crazy it's sad and i feel like that's a reason why too I seen that these people were like reaching out like this is not good for like their mental health. It's mm -hmm. like their family. This is true. So this is my real life. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if people are watching this and experiencing the trauma, re trauma of what mm -hmm. they experienced and still looking at it as idolization, it's it's crazy to me. So do you think the problem is within the uh the content, the art form, or is the problem within the people? Because mm -hmm. I didn't receive it like that. Yeah. So is some people's mind already programmed to receive somebody who's um, showing violence as attractive? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That could also be a question. I yeah. I looked at it as like, damn, like this. It to me, it really showed how the police force don't listen to. Um, people of color because like in the show he predominantly like his first two victims were white men mm -hmm. but after that he predominantly targeted people of color and mm -hmm. young children he even got somebody who was deaf like he yeah, targeted yeah. people who were already disadvantaged and i think that was very purposeful mm -hmm. 
And I think that it showed how the police just had a lack of like caring for these people. Because even with the um, 14 year old, the person came out and a woman was like, no, this looks like a child. The police were like, and they played the woman's real clip, like the wow. actual recording. Yeah. And the mom, the woman was like, did you, um, because basically her daughters found the little kid roaming the street because he actually escaped. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey Dahmer was coming back from the store and was like, oh, this is my boyfriend. He's 19. And the lady was like, this looks like a child. Like, this is oh not a 19-year-old. Like, it's clearly like a little child. He was 14 years old, drugged up, could barely even walk because he had got drugged up so bad. Yeah. And the police was just taking his word versus her word. And she was like... Well, when she followed up, because they just let Jeffrey take the kid in the house. Yeah. And the lady even followed up and called the police back. And she was like, my kids told me they've seen him at school. Like, these are the peers of my children. And they were like, ma'am, we've got to handle it. She was like, no, like, are you sure? They were like, ma'am, we got to. They just kept um, dismissing her. Yeah. And she lived with trauma after because she felt like she didn't do enough. Yeah. And she, oh, like, that's like yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. the kid ended up dying. And the crazy part is the kid who ended up dying, his older brother had already got molested by Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay. Then he went to jail for yeah. it um, for molesting the older brother. But he got released early and he was allowed to work during his jail time because they didn't want this to affect his records. <laughs> and then he got out and preyed on the boy that he molested, his younger brother, and ended up killing him. Wow. Yeah. So imagine how much trauma that family has to live with. I, I, see, stuff like that, it just like boils my blood so I know, that's why I knew I couldn't watch the show. Yeah. But. I was crying by the end yeah. of it. Cause it was like. It was like a lot of trauma. Yeah. And I was like, damn, like, I felt for them. See, and and that, like, to tie back to your question of do you think that it's, like, reci like reciprocated through different people, like, just by, you know, different personalities or different anything, like, uh, not anything, but different way of thinking. Uh -huh. I do agree on that. Because I feel like if I watch it, it's going to make me mad. And I feel like as black people, yeah, it it's different for us to watch something like that and seeing the trauma um, effect. How it affects, yeah. Yeah, the black community and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to say like it's black and white. But to see, because these people who were idolizing him was white women. Yeah. So when... And it showed, even in the show, after when he was in jail, he started to date a celebrity because all these white people were writing him like, oh, you're... Um, Here's five dollars. If you write me back, I'll send you more. I just want to know what it's like to be on mine. These women, oh, mind you, this is a gay man. Yeah. So, girl, now get that, together. Yeah. But they were still just like lusting after him. They even showed the police were calling the victim's family, harassing them, pretending to just be like regular people. Like they were harassing like the Asian family, like go back to your country, da da da. And the family kept getting phone calls, and the wife finally stopped it. And they cut to who was making the phone call. It was the police that were on the case. See? Ah. Like, it shows so much. Even, like, the police that, um, in the movie, it was a black neighbor, a woman, and the same woman who found the 14-year-old, mm -hmm. and she lived right next to him, and she kept complaining about a smell, a bad smell. And she was like, I hear people screaming. The police never came. They were like, well, go check on him. And she's like... What the fuck? Like, no. Like, yeah. he's, he's I mean, he's there yeah. Like, what the fuck? Oh like, that's crazy. Gosh. Imagine a police officer telling you that. To go them. check. Like, oh. what? Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, even just watching her, what she had to go through, it was just, like, a lot. It was very, very sad. Yeah. And it, like, she had to... It showed how people don't listen to black women. Yeah. Women, oh. just, women overall, but black, black. women even more. Mm -hmm. And it was just that. It yeah. was just like all around. I think it was a good deconstruction of Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. How his family played a role in it. His dad specifically, mm -hmm. who was helping him dissect roadkill. 
from a young age, his mom leaving him, Ugh. all kind of stuff, mental health problems that were never addressed because it was the eighties, all kind of stuff. Yeah, it was. Just, it's a lot of layers to it. I think it's a. It's. I don't hate the movie. Yeah. But I understand how it could cause black pain, mm -hmm. and I think it just adds to the something that's already overarching in Hollywood, yeah. which is just like the commodification of black pain yeah. and making money off of like how they have like slave movies. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I even specifically remember I never watched another Tyler Perry movie after you told me about about the um, for our women or for our girls, whatever movie Janet Jackson was in mm -hmm. and they just showed a whole bunch of black trauma. I specifically remember that conversation. Yeah. I still haven't watched that movie. Like Yeah, I that's one thing that I try to avoid completely is any movie that ties around black, like slavery movies. Yeah. I don't care. Even if it was produced by black, like, I feel like it's just re like repeating, redundant. yeah, redundant and repeating yeah. the same stuff and kind of like keeping our mindsets in the same place. Stuff, place. Like, okay, this happened. Make it, and I feel like it ties into like a fearful thing too. Like, oh, it's, it, you know, I don't know how to explain to it. To keep us in that. Uh, yeah. Fair based thinking. Yeah. That thinking where we can't have clarity and we're constantly thinking. Because we already have the understanding that we're at a disadvantage of this country. Yeah. But just constantly being reminded. And then they don't go back in our history past slavery. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, with that new Viola Davis movie, they went all the way back. Yeah. But it's still centered around black people selling other black people yeah. to white people which is uh -huh. true yeah but like what else do we have like we have so much art so much history so much yeah. written richness in our culture why are they not talking about the kings that ruled africa yeah why are they not talking about all these great black scientists like yeah. it's it, it baffles me because it's so much even the richest man i don't know if you ever heard about this but the richest man to was ever exist and they tried to race him yeah. with Jeff Bezos. Yeah, so it's like, uh -uh. it's sad because of course this is a system. Mm -hmm. The system is keeping us down. Push your power to the people. <laughs> but it's true. Like, it's just redundant. The same type of movies that's being put out is just this, like, the same type of stereotype of, okay, not even stereotype because it was slavery movies and then now it's black trauma and then most of the movies about black people is just the same type of like oh we've come from the struggle it's like mm -hmm. it's like showing that they we had the, to have the gone the through something. Type. they got the drug dealer they got yeah. the mammy uh -huh. they got the jezebel who's lusting after yeah women. like i actually read a whole book about it in college my mm -hmm. teacher recommended me about how the Hollywood system enacts racism. Wow. Even just thinking about how um, Holly Berry only ever won an Oscar for Monsters Ball when she was playing uh, the white man's whore. Cause like her black husband went to jail and she started messing with the white police officer mm -hmm. and she was on drugs. That's what she won the Oscar for. Yeah. Denzel won the Denzel Washington only has an Oscar from Training Day. He plays a cricket cop. Yeah. See, ugh, it's it, it's it's something to be looked it's at. It's intentional. It is, and it's something to be looked at and dissected for sure. Just excuse me. The um the way black people are portrayed in media and the way they keep like the, the highest rated movies that black people are starring in is basically to keep black people. It's never anything about like a. Black person said, like, you know. You know, that's why I love Jordan Peele so much. Yeah. Because he makes, he reimagines a whole genre of horror yeah. without black people being, like, not at risk, but being violated because of it. Like, yeah. It's more of an empowering thing, mm -hmm. more than taking away from them and showing, like, oh, this is your black pain. This is enough. Yeah. It kind of, like, turns it on its head. Uh -huh. And I really love that about Jordan Peele. Yeah, I agree. I loved all of his. I haven't seen Nope yet. Have you seen Nope? I have not. Yeah, I haven't nope. seen that nope. one. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I haven't seen that one, but uh, all of his other ones. And I like um, the way, even like um, us. How even though it was crazy, the movie was overall crazy, 
but it showed a structured black family. Yeah. And it just showed, of course, it's a scary And the only enemy was them, period. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate him as a director, as a, you know, a, just a person who is making film about black people mm -hmm. and to show us in a different different light and different like we could do horror we could do anything yeah. and I, I, I like um you know what's crazy what so i don't know if you ever heard about it but how the matrix the movie the matrix was like the story behind the matrix was stolen by a black woman really and what they told her is that black people are not in sci-fi like black people don't exist in sci-fi like they, she tried to pitch her story. I heard that the Wachowski mm -hmm. sisters. Now? Yeah, the the ones who made the. Yeah, because they like transition. Yeah. So I heard that they stole it, but I yeah. never knew the backstory. So I don't know that I, I heard the history of it, but I can't remember it word for word. But that's something that stuck out to me, like stood out to me, is that she was the original creator of the whole story, the whole background. She was pitching to Hollywood. But they didn't want to pick it up because it was a story wrapped around like a black. The person was supposed to be black. All the people, you know, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be about a, a black. Neo was black. And um, I forget the exact thing. I wish I knew the quote. But basically, it was showing how black people had to escape. You know, like the, the Matrix. It mm -hmm. was like, uh, I don't want to the get Matrix the quote wrong. The Matrix is like a symbolism. For it was like symbolism, yeah. The world we're living in. Yeah, it was. So I was like. That's crazy because, oh, hold on, let me just make sure the camera is not about to die. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do a little cut. Okay, but yeah, I feel like um, it's just crazy to see and to hear that because it's like, we've been, per like, literally, it's so many black creators and so many people out there that's putting stories out there and creating, mm -hmm. but aren't able to even step foot in that that Have realm voice is because heard. yeah because they just want the same black story of what we've yeah. been getting this whole time throughout hollywood imagine i feel like i'm like a big proponent and a big advocate for not putting people in boxes yeah like i hate it i hate same. it i hate it i hate mm -hmm. it like that's i love kanye i love anybody who refuses to be in the status quo and put in the box yeah and i feel like there's so many great creatives out here making good content yeah. that needs to be heard mm -hmm. and even it goes both way with the hollywood system only um putting out certain movies i feel like that's even the argument with tyler perry he's what he's Okay. <laughs> so Tyler Perry, he's great. Yeah. We're gonna start there. Mm -hmm. He is an amazing producer. He's employed so many black people. Yeah. He has his own studio, which fucking is history. Yeah. Like, it's literally history. Mm -hmm. Like a, the first black man to do this. But it makes me wonder after he's been critiqued so many times for the kind of content he portrays within the black community it's mm -hmm. kind of very like one-dimensional characters yeah, for sure but he refuses to hire writers to write on his show he writes all his stuff himself yeah so i'm just like it's also a thing where we need to well, once we get into these positions of power we have to like uh, give the what's the word? Yeah, give the opportunity yeah. and delegate. Yeah, delegate. That's the word. Okay. Word. You need to delegate opportunities and tasks and roles to different yeah. people. Exactly. Because I, agree. I don't want to see one type of movie that's a black trauma slave movie, but I also don't want to see Medea act like a mammy. Yeah. Every time I turn on BT. Yeah. Like, no. Exactly. Like black people are so multifaceted and yeah. black one dimensional. Mm -hmm. So I need to see all these different creatives put forth their work. Yeah, I, I totally agree because when we are like literally when we're put in this box this is how people are portraying us all over the world. If they're yeah. seeing these movies put out, like even, we could even say 50 Cent's Power. Mm -hmm. That whole thing, I, I don't watch it in detail, so I don't know the exact. Me neither. Yeah, I don't know the exact content behind it, but of course it's 
black people is drugs involved is mm -hmm. killing involved is guns involved what you know like stuff like that and i'm not saying the story is you know people love it it's entertaining but just to constantly see black people in this light it's like okay what what's new that's what's, the idea of people from a yeah people. and it's like it's for us it's like okay we're seeing this and it's embarrassing. People are viewing us as this person or viewing us as these type of people. This is like like what they are. And it's, it's putting us, like you said, in this box. And it's another thing, because I just watched um, uh, Kid Cudi's, um, the, the animated movie. You watched it? Yeah. It and was good? It was very good. Really? It was really good. I'm going to watch it, because Kid Cudi has been like kind of I know to me lately. Yeah. But but it was good so i was like okay let me just like i watched it with my fiance and it showed a like black people mm -hmm. living their life in new york mm -hmm. they run and it's like a romance and i feel like i swear to you it's not simple stories like that where it's like a man a black man a black woman just like falling in love and yeah. like finding like the balance like they were both like artists and like when, when, when they do that it's considered a black movie yeah and it's like put into this whole other category yeah so it's like okay why can't that just be a love story yeah and we've seen black people in love and and yeah. then you know like portrayed in a in a good light that's why um do you did you watch that movie with Issa Rae um, I love that movie yes. Girl. yes I went to the premiere of that movie um uh -huh. Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield I forget the name the the it was do you remember the name no I think we're talking about two different movies because oh. I'm definitely talking about a movie with an Indian man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> okay. But look, he, that's not tight. You already he, know. You already He's know. Tight. He is. I am, I, I'm waiting. I mean, I'm engaged, but we all look know that. Look, look good. Where you at, baby? <laughs> but I did see that Indian, uh, the Indian man and her yeah. in a movie together. I think that was the movie. It may have been. It was either the movie with Keith or mm -hmm. movie with her, but she basically it was like a romantic movie. Yeah, it may have been the one with Keith. I think that yeah, because the the one with the uh, Indian man, I don't, I don't it was know. more of an action. It was like, action and funny. Yeah, but so, it was yeah. still romantic. The one with Keith. Yeah, everybody was saying like, it, oh, it's so boring, so basic. But Issa was like, why can't we just have regular movies with yeah. black people falling in love? Like, exactly. What's wrong with it? Like, it's so many movies where it just, it might be boring and basic, but they have somebody just in a rom-com or somebody just falling in love and enjoying the experience. Yeah. Why don't we have that on a yeah, wider scale? Exactly. And I, when I, because I went to the premiere for that movie and I loved it so much. I'm just like, wow. Like, it was just like. A beautiful movie they um you know meet and you know like follow like you know a rom-com and it's like just to see you know to be in darker tone too because yeah that's the key like we don't see that a lot yeah we we see that light skin look for real <laughs> but to see this and just like no type of trauma back no type of abuse and that's the thing it's like constantly seeing black people abused or something had to happen to them as a young you know like and then oh they grow out of it even the success stories it's always some type of trauma tied in behind it instead of just having like two people falling in love and that's what i loved about that movie so much when i went to go see it it was like just a beautiful love story and both and of them are beautiful people yeah. and it's just like oh you know like oh, it made you want to just feel good like yeah, yeah that, i feel like we need to see that more. it makes us want to live our own love story with a key yeah no, I'll, <laughs> I'll give that one to you <laughs> but yeah it's like it was it was nice to see a new because literally like that movie i feel like was and it's probably still is one of its own like it it's hasn't been yeah like it's that. not too many yeah that's portrayed that's and it. honestly like if there is i'm sure it's all the way back in the 90s and we have to remember it's 2022 because Girl. that's over 20 years ago yeah well, we reference movies that we love that are over 20 years old yeah. like we and that doesn't make any sense like, it doesn't there's so I many black creators black filmmakers black storytellers mm -hmm. just so many voices that need to be at the forefront yeah. and yeah, I think that's why I love Issa Rae, yeah. Jordan Peele. Those are all people who push these black voices to the forefront. 
and I totally just, agree. Like, even have you seen a show rap shit yeah, I love that show. Oh, gee, I love that show. I love it's so it. Good. Like, and even um, Sweet Life is showing like reality of successful black people. Within and, LA. Yeah, yes. within LA. And just like living their life and showing, of course, it has some type of, because it's a reality show. It's like some type of drama storyline. Yeah, but it's a beautiful thing to see. Like, these are successful black people, young, like our, around our age. And it's just like, okay. We're seeing this and experiencing this. Usually, like the reality shows is like predominantly white, or mm -hmm. or it's like the one black person that is usually like in the, in the mix. mix of it all. But to see this, it's like okay, you know, it's inspiring to see them mm -hmm. having like friendships and going out, traveling. It makes me want to yeah. have my own circle. Exactly, hey, Jordan. Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I feel like and how you mentioned the '90s movies. That is crazy because it seems like in the 90s, like that, that whole type of um, black movie was very like prominent in, mm -hmm. in um, black culture. And we have so many black movies, even uh, like black love stories. It was a movie that I just saw. Love Jones. Love Jones, uh, I've seen that all one. All kind of movies, How to Be a Player. Yeah. Um, what's the one with Janet and Tupac? Um, why not? Why am I? Why is that not coming to my head? Any time we can call it justice. Yeah, call it justice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes, you, Kendrick. For real, but that movie was so good, and it was one that I just recently watched with Lorenz Tate and Jada. They were younger. I forget the name uh, of it. Brown seen, Sugar. No, I seen it on TikTok. <sighs> Lorenz Tate is so fine. He is, but this one, he was like, he was lit. He was. Some I don't want to say that, but okay. <laughs> he was younger. I think, I don't know how, what the age group, but he was young and he was portrayed as like, a, I think he was like 16 years old. Oh, okay. But um, it, I, I liked it because it, and a lot of people don't like, like my mom told me she didn't like the movie, but I watched it like recently. I didn't watch it um, like when I was growing up, but I watched it recently. I'm like, it's just so, because he was a, he was a child and he seemed like he was a little, like he probably had like, ADHD mm -hmm. or something like that, but it was like a he went to vacation with his um, his cousins and his aunts who were like upper class and they lived okay. in like a nice area like on the beach of I forget what, but um, it was just like the whole storyline was just so like nice and innocent and just like oh the ending uh, the ending was kind of weird I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who's like who yeah, never seen it about. yeah I, okay I'm gonna look it but up I haven't seen a lot of as y'all will find out, I have not seen a lot of our historically black films. Please don't take my black heart. My yeah. mom didn't like comedies or romantics. I watched the action movies. Yeah, this one, I I, I'm, I never even heard of it before I seen yeah. it on TikTok. So, um, let me see. I'm gonna look it up really quick, really quick. It, yeah, yeah, it's fine. He really is. Okay, let me not, let me chill. <laughs> But this, it was called The Inkwell. Oh, see, I've never seen that. If or you have time, it. if you, you know, it, whenever I have time, like, you should watch the movie. Okay. It, it's a really nice, just a, you know, like an innocent love story. The ending is kind of weird because, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to spoil it, but the ending kind of made me, I was like, ooh. But. I'll watch it. Yeah, you should watch it. But uh, overall, the storyline is really nice. And I, I, I like, it's like. We didn't grow up on seeing stuff like that, like mm -hmm. in our time, but the, because we were born in the 90s, but we didn't, we were, yeah, we I were was like two. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, this movie came out, 90, this was before we were born, 94. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like now people who are like directors, I don't know who directed this, but it seems like we need more of stuff like this. And yeah. I like how you mentioned Issa Rae and uh, Jordan Peele are, taking that, uh, taking it on to portray black uh, mm -hmm. experiences in black black um, culture in a different light and showing them in different situations. We did have one great, he recently passed, I forget his name, but he made Boys in the Hood, he made oh, Snowfall, yeah. mm -hmm. um, John Singleton. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like we need more people like John yeah. Singleton to bring these stories that mm -hmm. 
are not so polarizing and just like, oh my God, they're doing this. Yeah. But just show stories. Mm -hmm. I think film is all about storytelling. Mm -hmm. I even remember my film class, like we did the history of film and I specifically, I literally want to like email this teacher all the time because I want to ask him about it. We went through Asian film, we went through a top European film, we yeah. went through all these different film genres. We never touched on African film or black film. Wow. And I, to this day, I like, I didn't realize it as I was taking the class, but yeah. after I was just like, do you understand what you do to students when you teach a whole film history class and yeah. leave black people out of it? It's because you cannot convince me that there was no filmmakers in Africa. Like, it's, yeah, you can't convince me at like, all. With the trade that was going on, like, no, like yeah. even spaghetti westerns or just anything. Mm -hmm. And the teacher never spoke about that. I was just wow. like, you literally are erasing a whole identity of people yeah. that have probably been needed in an important part of film history. Yeah, so, and I. I think a terrible part. Yeah, and I think people like how you say you professor. I think it's like uh, how do I unconscious say? bias. Yeah, and they they show this because they don't want to show us like the history of mm -hmm. because we like growing up. I've never seen like predominantly like African film stuff that came from Africa. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm older, I'm seeing like clips and stuff. I'm like, oh, let me search it up. Like I. Yeah. I just watched one, like, um, the other day, and I'm like, wow, it's like, you know, these are, like, good films, and it's, it's crazy. Like, Mollywood is crazy. Yeah. Like, I watched a lot on um, Netflix recently. Uh -huh. And they have good stories, and it's crazy. 10 out of 10, I love yeah. the genre. And they try to erase it, which is crazy. It's like, okay, why? But, and then that ties back to the why. Why are they erasing yeah. the films? I'm scene. trying to think of what film it was. It was like a black film and it did so well. And it was like the first um, African woman to ever get nominated to like mm -hmm. the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. I forget. It was like, I think it was like a Nigerian picture. If I can't remember it this episode, y'all, I'll um, bring it back or edit it in. Yeah. But they literally, because Nigeria, they filmed it in English. They disqualified her from everything because they said it wasn't in a foreign language. Wow. Even though Nigeria's um, like national language is English. Wow. So you're blaming her for the effects of colonialism. colonialism yeah. And she's literally telling this beautiful story about a Nigerian um, girl mm -hmm. and her coming to age story. Yes. Yeah. Like... And she was set to win multiple awards, and they disqualified her because they were like, oh, it doesn't count as an international film if it's in English. Wow. But they pull anything to not give people the credit. That that's crazy. Right. So, like, yeah. It how did they end up speaking English in Nigeria? Let's talk about it. Yeah. Really? How did that happen? How? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like what? Let's talk about it. That's the first question. So why disqualify Hey. For something that y'all people did. <laughs> that was y'all people. About it. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that I feel like this whole genre of film tying it all back even to the Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean Jeffrey yes. Dahmer. I'm sorry, tying it back to Jeffrey Dahmer. It just the constant showing of black people in a negative light and bringing down the. Bringing dimming down the light of the successful and the the, mm -hmm. the good stories that is promoted in Hollywood is it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it, really it really is, is. and that's a whole history lesson in itself. So whoever is listening, y'all just heard a history lesson <laughs> yeah. of the film. Because I'm gonna tell y'all this. Yeah, Will Smith exposed and um, did a bio biopic about the man who discovered the CTE mm -hmm. disease. He didn't get nominated that year, and that's the year Jada um, boycotted. And when they return, now we have all this, and now he's blackballed, and now he doesn't have a career. So let's talk about it. Wow. See, girl. When you start making these connections.
Yeah, it gets deep, deeper and, and deeper. The NFL literally went against like the movie because they didn't want the masses seeing like CTE. Mm-hmm. It got so many bad reviews. I went and seen that movie. That movie was great. Wow. And he literally just exposed how the NFL uses black bodies to like make so many billions of dollars, and these people are left with this disease that they don't want to pour any money into the research because then people are not going to play football. Mm-hmm. And now. I mean, Wow, you know, because at first when you mentioned it, I wasn't remembering what the movie was, but I swear that movie, it was like out in the media, but then it just disappeared. Yeah. Wow, because I, I swear I remember it, but I never like. It, it didn't get any awards. Yeah. He, that's literally the year Jada was like, we're black, we, we need to boycott the Emmys or the um, Oscars, whatever. Yeah because he should have got awarded. And I feel like he brought a story. It's all about storytelling. Yeah. He did a good job, but he's gonna be nominated for the Pursuit of Happiness when he's playing a poor black man that's homeless. Uh, Let's talk about it. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, that got deep, for sure. (laughs) But this is opening conversation, for sure. Just to, you know, to, to see and to understand the reasoning behind certain things. Yeah. Because we don't, we just get fed the same things and thinking it's a normal thing and like thinking this is like, you know, okay, this is what the people want to make or this is, yeah. but they're not showing. What goes behind it and all the people who yeah. get rejected and all the stories that need to be told, yeah. but they're not told. But all in all, I feel like that's just, another thing to keep creatives going to yeah. inspire people to yes. get their stories out mm-hmm. because our stories are what makes the world turn around exactly. and what entertains people yeah. and what enlightens people mm-hmm. and what helps people learn and help people understand like maybe oh i'm going through this but somebody else is going through the same thing and mm-hmm. this is how they figured it out you know exactly so See, yeah yeah i feel like there's a lot to be made um off of black pain but there's a lot to be learned yeah. off of black excellence and i'd rather learn you i know? love that <laughs> i love that yeah. quote I was, yeah. yeah i agree <laughs> so yeah so with that we can move on that was the topic of you know how we felt about the jeffrey dahmer show and it went into a tangent yeah. but a good tangent and a necessary yeah. tangent a tangent relating to the commodification in the film industry of black pain specifically yes we're going to bring up them degrees in this conversation yes and get into it yes but exactly. next we're going to move on to something a little bit lighter yes we're going to quickly you know it was pretty dry this week y'all yeah with the tea it wasn't the tea, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't as you know as hot <laughs> this yeah. week. So the only thing we really have, or let's say what we have this week, is basically Carisha becoming the next Black Oprah. <laughs> per. For real. Uh, exactly. I agree. Per. I love it. Oprah. So what do you think? Is she is she um giving Oprah a run for her money? Is she going to be the next Black Oprah? Because I, I be tuning in every week. I'm really? Yeah. I feel like it even had Oprah. I seen a post saying that Oprah was like, oh, I miss doing my show after Krisha mentioned that. I was like, okay. No, not Oprah shaking her boots. Oprah was like, oh, okay. Maybe I gotta step up my game. Maybe I gotta get back out there on the streets. Krisha about to tell her something. She would have get back on the streets. Krisha about to take my, my throne. So mm. I think I love that show and I love that she's able to, um, you know, light. yeah, make light and show other celebrities. She because I know she interviews other celebrities and just you know show their personalities yeah. and their true like nature. So I like Teresa. I like Teresa. She's I fun. Too. She's so fun and so funny. Like every time I see a post about her, I know I'm gonna like die laughing yeah. because she's so <laughs> funny. Like, and I, I feel like all she wants is a good time. Yeah, like, and I feel like that type of energy is just like needed in times where it's like okay. Let me like go watch her yeah. interview with her to make me feel like it's and I I think she's good at what she does. Like she's starting off a new podcast, just like we are. We're starting mm-hmm. off a new podcast. But I feel like with her it's like 
you know, it's, it's good to watch. And it's good because she has the following and the, you know, she had a, a prominent following. And to see other celebrities on there, it's just a fun light. And to hear their personal stories and stuff yeah. like that. Like stuff and she can get into it. She, she can really ask her questions we all want yeah. to hear. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, she's doing good. At, like, she, she hit in the heart. Yeah. Oprah, you better watch out. Oprah. <laughs> you better step your game up, Oprah. Mm -hmm. Because Chris you know, Cruz is yeah. The next Do black Oprah. Doing covers for, oh, <laughs> you better. She better to take your spot. Oh, but yeah, overall, I think she's a good, um, she's a good creative and good artist. And it just, it's just I'm nice. glad that her and JT are like branching out, but yeah. also they're the city girls. Uh huh. I want to see them around yeah. for longer, even if it's not a rap. Yeah. I like their personality. I do too. I like to see um, both of them, yeah, like how you said, branching out and just doing their own thing, but still not in a negative, like they didn't break up and be like yeah, catty. And then it, yeah, because stuff like that, that could take a lot from, like if you see a group break, fall out, and then it's like toxic uh, yeah. energy between it, and then it's like, uh. But to see that they still like they i feel like they probably i don't know the person but they probably will always have love for each other and yeah. always you know keep it because they grew up together they were yeah. city girls throughout they've been city girls yeah they've been it so i i, I really like um just to see that let's get into the dating yeah. so okay yeah let's hold on <laughs> Let's kind of like branch out because we, we, we're adding a new little topic into our yeah. system right now. Just because, you know, some stuff is going on. We like and to I'm hear it out. Dating. <laughs> I'm saying one thing I'm so we're going to have dating. a dating corner. We usually have a tea corner, but now we're going to add a little dating corner. So let's get into that. Let's get into it. Yes. So basically, I have a question for y'all, for the audience. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Nas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I basically been dating this guy. He's pretty cool, mm -hmm. like he's a regular. Sparks are not just flying, but they're, he's cool. Yeah. Uh, he has a good job. He works, I'm not even gonna say all that. Yeah, yeah. He has a good job. Mm -hmm. He seems like a good person. But basically, the last time I hung out with him, I like touched the you know the area, yeah. and let's say it was not packing. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. I need to know based on that, should I continue to date him? Because I feel like if I don't know, I'm too thick. So mm -hmm. it it takes a certain amount to even just penetrate. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have something there for a team to get because there's a layer between you. Yeah. Like, I'm just being real. Like, yeah. you don't have to come with something. So, so, but I'm just like, okay, he may make make up for it in the other areas. But I'm so, just do like, you think hmm. that was like the full effect? I don't know. That's the thing, because you know they be growers, not showers. But what if he's not a grower? Hmm. So, well, what let's you doing? See. What? Oh, what y'all doing? So, I don't know. I want to say, because you don't know for sure, like, what if it... <laughs> but then what if it's, like, what I thought it would be and not that great and yeah. I sleep with this person and it's just, like, we're not even sexually compatible. So it's really yeah. a waste because I'm not about to spend a life, the rest of my life with somebody who... Yeah. Or even like let alone just have fun with it, but yeah. spend the rest of my life with it. Like, hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to. Hmm. What should I do? I I want to say like maybe I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't know. I don't know what you what the whole situation was, but I want to say because you never know. You know, yeah. it could. I don't know if it. What the what whole they say, it's not the size of the boat, it's the much of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> he just like, blow your mind. <laughs> but, um, I, I wouldn't say to completely, if you like his energy and like all of that stuff, I wouldn't say to completely cut it off. But I don't know, because that is like, okay, if you get into that and it's like, yeah. It's important. I don't want to cheat on nobody. I'm trying to yeah. be a good person at all. See? Yeah. We talked about cheating on our last episode. I'm trying to be reformed, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Oh yeah. Uh, what would y'all do? Like, I feel like I need an answer because I'm, I, I think that it it would be maybe maybe I her like a picture. I don't know. I don't know. If that's weird. He gonna put it next to remote and he gonna be embarrassed because I'm not gonna take back yeah. if it's no. Because I don't know, like a lot of people, I don't know about pictures. I don't know. Oh, I don't remember really usually. And y'all, I, I have not been dating, so yeah. I don't know what be going on in the back scenes. No, and each stuff. time I get a picture, it's usually unsolicited. And yeah, I that's not right. Yeah. And I just be like, wow, what do you think I wanted to just see this? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. So I, I feel like, so how did this situation, I don't know if you want to get into details, but like, so it happened, and then you just like, like okay, no. No, we we went on multiple dates. Like, we went to the movie, because mm-hmm. we hung out. Like, I kind of feel bad, because we would hang out after work. Mm-hmm. Girl, one thing about me, I'm going to fall asleep. I'll be tired. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would fall asleep. Yeah. So, like, the last time we hung out, we went and got food and everything. Yeah. Or he got food, ordered it to the house. Mm-hmm. I feel so bad, because I just fell asleep. But I knew I was tired, but he was telling me, like, oh, you're not really responsive. So I was like, let me respond. Yeah. And show up. I fell asleep. He was like, I tried to love you, but you're a deep sleeper. I was like, you just don't know. The, the end of the world could be happening. I'm going to stay For sleeping. Real? Like, <laughs> but, yeah. And so far, we all we've done is kiss and went yeah. on a few dates. Mm-hmm. But I just had a feel for the emotion. You know, and in the it, moment, but then it didn't yeah. lead to nothing else. Yeah, but then he was like, "Hold on, <laughs> literally, hold on, water, a big shot voice, like, mm. what's going on?" And I really just don't want to waste my time. But then I also don't want to miss out on somebody who's yeah. cool and nice. But where's when is where's the line? Where's the balance? Like, yeah, is he just gonna have to eat my butt? <laughs> <laughs> Be safe. Be safe, That's y'all. One. Be safe. We told y'all last week. Yeah, we told y'all last week to be safe. So continue being safe. But I. But yeah, like if it's not worth it, then. But you like him as a person. He's cool. Yeah, he's handsome. Like um, he has a like his um a his gentleman. Nice. His, he has an accent. Yeah. Like I like it, but I just don't know about the other part. Yeah. Let me show you. I'm gonna. Okay. You would not believe who just DM'd me. Mm-hmm. Somebody I know? Somebody you've heard of about. Um, but I'm gonna find his page. We can continue. Yeah. Wow, find his so, page. So, yeah, just but. let us know. If you guys have any, just like, you know, comment down below. Any. Advice. <laughs> yeah. Any advice would be nice. Yeah. Don't think twice. Nope. Send that advice. <laughs> so, I guess with this all being said, we could probably move on because we are kind of going over time. Um, okay, let's, let's move on to it. our wellness segment and our fall goals. So, do you have any particular fall goals that you have set up? So yes, in this last quarter of the fall, I want to be the richest I've ever been. Period. Now, Girl, for real. like yeah. I'm trying to make some money. Like yeah. no bullshit. I just started this new job. They're yeah. giving me a lot of opportunity. 
that I already talked about giving me a raise See? on Monday. I have a meeting, and I've only been there for over a month. For real. So yeah, oh, so I'm good. trying to make as much money as possible mm -hmm. for me to be put into the spaces and places that I want to be in. Yeah, I'm trying to end the year very much um, stable. I want to come into the new year just being ready. Yeah, usually I'm just like. I'm worried about everybody else, but this year I'm just hyper focused on myself, and that's why I, I, I feel that. like I've seen so much growth. Yeah, because I'm not worried about a relationship. I'm mm -hmm. not worried about take care of this person. I'm out here for me. So yeah. my goal this some this um, winter mm -hmm. is to really just one make as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. I want to be happy. I want to be able to travel and afford all my bills at the same time. Yeah. And I want to actually start another business because like I said earlier, I do do lashing, mm -hmm. but I'm not as passionate about lashing as like some of my previous endeavors, like with makeup and different things. Mm -hmm. I really want to find Maybe I've already found it in this podcast. I know, yeah. But I really just want to find what really makes me happy, mm -hmm. what I can just pour myself into. Like, love is great. Like, you guys know I'm a dater. Mm -hmm. But I really just want to focus on uplifting and just build it on myself because I truly believe when I'm at my maximum Ronnie, yeah. the right person will come along exactly. and just match my energy. So, and that yeah, is I'm just trying to be the maximum me. That's so great. I yes. love to hear that. I love what about it. you? Um, my fall goals is the same to make as much bank as possible to be rich. We'll be rich by the end of the year. Period. <laughs> hey, I'm a manifest. But yeah, to just be on track with everything and on track with my life and to be more organized and mm -hmm. more consistent with the things that I do. And yeah, that's the main thing is just to be consistent and continuously, you know, grow and, um, Grow into myself and grow into what I really like to do. Like you mm -hmm. said, like the podcast is something like this is something that is really fun and really something that I really like to do. And being that I have, of course, my lovely partner, that we get to grow together. Like I like yeah, that. Yeah, it and feels good. It does. So I, I, I really want to grow into um, just becoming the best version of myself and figuring out how to be more organized and how to organize my life and structure really. So. I guess that's that's my fall for I mean my my <laughs> that's my goals for all of fall and all of like the rest of the the year and then into next year too is just to be more organized and be more passionate too. Mm -hmm. I feel like because when you lose like kind of like a spark in certain stuff in certain areas, it's like okay, it's hard to get back yeah. into the motion of things. But this um, being consistent with the podcast is something that's given me like the spark to yeah, be consistent in everything yeah. else in my life so. i know it sounds crazy y'all but i definitely agree yeah. i feel like it gives me like a bit of purpose because mm -hmm. even when i'm not doing anything i'm like okay let me figure out how to do something more with graphic design yeah. let me figure out how to take our podcast to the next level mm -hmm. each time when i can sit there and i'm not in just like relax mode and i ask myself i constantly try to ask myself and this is a good tip for our listeners as well mm -hmm. when you're having free time ask yourself did i work on my dream today i love that like yeah. did i work what did i do to push my dream forward mm -hmm. and every time that thought comes to my head it makes me want to do something more for the podcast yeah. it makes me want to do something more for myself to elevate myself because it's crazy times y'all yeah and we just have to really protect our own mm -hmm. well-being and really just follow your dreams because according to npr we got about 20 years left oh time. yeah <laughs> so we, we gotta, gotta make it happen time. so we gotta make all our dreams we gotta true. enjoy these 20 and years and i'll be damned if i get girl, obliterated off this planet what i'll be who i want to be period it, girl i love period. that exactly we got 20 more years so yeah. <laughs> advice to y'all <laughs> make sure y'all get what y'all dreams are and get to y'all dreams within these two years because that's yeah. all we got <laughs> No food, to no water. <laughs> y'all, y'all better follow y'all dreams. Follow y'all dreams, for real though. Yes. But I love that. Um, the next thing is, I guess we could talk about the um, 
mental health reset for the last three months. Yes. Yeah. So, do you want to start with the mental health reset? Like, what are some techniques that you're doing to like reset your mental health? It is the last quarter of the year. Yeah. It's a, a equinox time where mm -hmm. things are shifting, technology yeah. is shifting, and we just left, are shifting. We just left the retrograde. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that was tearing me up. I'll like, be lost in the sauce in the retrograde. Like, and, and people be like, oh, oh why wow, this not real? It's real for me. I feel like Life is coming up too fast. Too fast. <laughs> so I feel like a mental health reset for me is really like just um, taking the time out to focus on my health, mm -hmm. what I'm putting into my body. I wanna, and I, like within this whole month, I've been like kind of slacking on that. And I mm -hmm. feel like I wanna, now I feel more so like, I gotta focus on my health. I gotta start going to the gym again and getting back into that, um, mm -hmm. you know, that mindset of health is wealth. Cause that's number one, really. Yeah. Like if, if y'all wanna follow your dreams, you gotta take care of your health first because right. Yeah, that's how you go. Without health, you have nothing. Yeah, so that's so that's something I want to focus on is like uh, my health and my well being uh, mentally and physically. Because I feel like once you fix the physical, well, the mental is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So once you realize that you want to work on the mental and start doing the physical, it all falls into place. Connects each other. Yeah, it yeah. connects. So I feel like to be mentally balanced, you have to be physically balanced. Yeah. And they're, like, life is, you know, it's all about balance. Yeah, and general, exactly. So like, they really go hand in hand. I agree. So like, that's something that I uh, feel like is when I'm focusing on my mental and my physical, which will elevate me once I get there. But I'm working on it. And I know that I'm able to to work on it through that. Yeah. So what about you? Mine would probably have to be to really shift from being a people pleaser mm -hmm. to really just doing what I like to do. Like yeah. I I'm a cancer. We're both cancers. Mm -hmm. So often I find myself like even just with my schedule, like you you know how crazy my yeah. schedule is. But I even find myself committed to things that I might not want to do. But mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, it fits into my schedule for now. And this is what this person wants to do with my time. But I have to just realize that I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't always have to spend my time pleasing other people. Yeah. And my time is very valuable. Like, we know time is a construct. But my time specifically mm -hmm. is very valuable these days. Like yesterday's price is not today's price. Exactly. And I just find myself like even last week I was invited to a concert and I'm mm -hmm. just like, hmm, I only know two songs from this artist, but the person said it should be fun, so why not? Yeah. But when I really thought about it, I'm just like, no. Why am I gonna want, spend huh? my energy, my time, like my presence? doing this and i really don't want to be doing this i could be working on my podcast working yeah. on my personal business i could be working with something for my weekly business mm -hmm. i could just be doing something fun like thrift shopping and yes, buying clothes girl. like yes. no i refuse to continue to give people my time when first of all they haven't earned it mm -hmm. and they don't not i'm not gonna say they don't deserve it but I feel like I need to put the things I want to do first. Exactly. And yeah, like I'm not um, sacrificing my own time to make other people happy anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that's such a good tip because yeah. we oftentimes spread ourselves so thin and mm -hmm. that's how it leads to burnout. Yeah. But yeah, I don't want to be living in that mindset where I feel like I constantly have things to do, but it's not actually equating to me elevating the life yeah. like everything i should do with it's a song off of brent fire's new album music corner when he says um i think basically he says if it's not about the money like i just don't care yeah like i don't and money isn't everything but time is valuable and yeah like mm -hmm. i said yesterday's price it's not, it's not today. today's price period I love that. And yeah, I totally agree. I feel like when you put yourself first, it's showing you 
that you matter. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a bit of else. self-respect too. Yeah, yeah, self-respect. So I, I, I love that. I, I agree completely. Is you gotta mm-hmm. put your, your mental and your, your space and your wants and needs before just jumping the gun with anybody else. Yeah. You know, expecting that oh, this person expects to spend time with me, so I'm gonna give them my time. But yeah, it's no. not. Yeah, people just because they expect your time doesn't mean they earn your time. Yes, and especially with my job, like it's very demanding during the week. I have work like yeah. basically throughout my whole day, mm-hmm. so it's like when I have free time, it's highly valued. Yes, it's like exactly. highly valued. So yes, yeah. so I love that. Take time for yourself this season. Make yes. sure y'all. Every day when y'all wake up, you should be asking yourself, what am I doing today to work on my dreams? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I doing to keep my goal pushing forward? Because ultimately, you're in control of everything you do in your life. And your reality is your thoughts and your actions. And if you spend your time focusing on the negative and complaining about what you don't have or who's doing this to you... Mm -hmm. You can only get so far, but if you really focus yourself on your dreams, your passion, and just really fulfilling your purpose on this earth, you will have eternal success and eternal happiness, and I really believe in that. I love that so much. Manifest a queen. Period. Yes. (laughs) So we're going to manifest the life that we want to live, and we're going to show you guys... We're going to be the, yes. We, we all in this together. We all in this we together. All, yeah. <laughs> together. Shout out to us. What is that? High school musical? Yeah. Shout, Shout out to Zach Efron. That's our legends. Yes. So, yes, that's our mental health segment. Um, the next thing we want to do, because we have a lot of um, segments within our wellness segment. So, the next one is our self-care and... Um, Based our self care tips for fall and winter. Do you have any so tips? my number one self care tip for fall and winter would be to wash the bottom of your feet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but for real, y'all should be doing that in your yeah. sandals. Yeah. Anytime y'all have in the shower, wash the yeah, bottom of your wash feet. Yeah, wash the bottom of your feet. For real. We smell them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But no, <laughs> you know, I've been working on my skin. Yeah. Like, I suffer from hyperpigmentation, like mm-hmm. a lot of our dark skin queens do. Yes. So, I've been really making it a point to exfoliate my skin. Like, I really love turmeric. Like, oh, yeah. turmeric is heaven sent for me. I've been doing turmeric masks with just um, some organic Greek yogurt mm. and turmeric. And sometimes, if like, I'm having a really crazy week with acne. I'll um, put some apple cider vinegar in there to clarify and detoxify my skin. But yes, turmeric and my weekly mask have been doing great for me. I really feel like the sun is starting to slowly go away. So this is the time I really want to really give my skin some TLC. It's not exposed to the sun as much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just all about skincare and just self-care for me this um last quarter of yeah the year. that's nice i feel like for me um a self-care for fall and winter is really hair care because i've been neglecting my hair i've been like really putting it off and um kind of just like throwing on different wigs i'm like mm-hmm. and just like okay i'm not doing my hair today but i feel like i used to be really big into help uh like um hair care yeah. but i'm trying to get back into the flow of things and really like taking care of my ends and um you know y'all know as black girls it is um silk press season yeah silk press season so i am waiting for it to cool down in la because it's still gonna be hot and it's still been hot so i'm kind of like waiting till it really hits like the fall Mm -hmm. weather really hits to get my silk press and get my cut so for now i've just been like kind of i just started i want to start like deep conditioning and deep Mm -hmm. um like Making sure my hair is protected because it's still hot and it's still like, you know, your hair really nice. needs to be yeah, yeah protected at this time. You know what I used for the first time last night what? that really worked and made my hair feel great? Rice water. Really? Yeah. Girl, my girl, this is a whole nother story, but. <laughs> 
my little sister, my niece made some, and I was like, oh, you have to let it sit. I smelled that. I was it's, like, it smells horrible. I let mine sit for like a week. Oh, it smelled. I'm not gonna lie. My sister walked in the house like, what the fuck? Yeah, but my hair felt amazing. I really? flattered it after. Like I feel like it was still so shiny. It was so healthy. It didn't feel burnt out or thin. Okay. Like, I would highly recommend it. I'm definitely gonna implement rice water. Okay, I'm gonna try it again, but it's that stinky. smell, I was just like, I can't. Mm -mm. I also have heard you could put essential oils yeah. to block out the smell, like oh. some peppermint. I know that okay. stimulates hair growth. Mm -hmm. um, peppermint, eucalyptus, anything you like, probably lavender. I'm not a lavender fan, but. It's, yeah, too much of it is like. Yeah, it's a headache. Headache. Yeah, yeah, I don't get that, but. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm, yeah, I get a headache from it too, but um, also heard that rosemary water mm. is really good for the scalp. Like once you like wash your hair, you spray it with rosemary water and then, um, you know, do your protective styles or whatever, but I'm gonna try that too because I haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. But the rice water, I was like, that smell lot, yeah. was like terrible for me. So it I'm is like, terrible. It threw and me it off. stays for hours in your yeah. house. Yeah, so I'm like, ooh, I don't know. But I'm going to try it because I do want, I really just want healthy hair because it makes your hair really shiny and it just yeah. feels like really like, like full, like it gives all your hair the protein it needs. Yeah, I feel like that's where my hair is lacking is in like the, the luster of shine, especially if I do like a like a wash and then like um blow dry, whatever like my hair just never like the shine is never there it's like mm -hmm. a doll so i do want to work on like keeping my hair shiny and um you know fresh and getting it cut regularly because that's my issue like it's a lot of breakage because mm -hmm. of not getting it cut and not uh, cutting off the, the split ends. ends yeah, yeah. so yeah i feel like health um uh, hair care <laughs> is my um self-care for the fall. Yes, yes. I love it. Skincare, hair care, how did you go wrong? Yeah, exactly. And just feel good. Like yeah. this season we is like- these two baddies. <laughs> 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 Period. Period. And it's all about caring for yourself and love yourself. That's, I feel like that's our motto. Yeah, like that's care for yourself. Care for yourself, love yourself. And everything else will fall into place. Yeah, because health is well. Health is well. So with that, I guess we could move on to our black business. Yes. We each have one again, like last week. Do you want to start off this week? Yeah, I can. Okay. So, um, my black business of the week, and it's something that this whole summer, like, I could not, like, live without, because I've been, like, out, this whole summer, like, most of the time I was outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, my black business is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is, um, Black Girl Sunscreen, and I, before I was not a firm believer in sunscreen, I was really like, black people don't need sunscreen. Mm -hmm. We black, we have the sun. Mean. And then it was one year, <laughs> the sun tore me up. I got such a bad sunburn on my shoulders and like, it hurt so bad. It was like for weeks. And I was like, oh. okay, I take that like, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe yeah. I should start looking at the sunscreen. So I would always try different sunscreens like, um, the basic the generic brands yeah and like, but it will always leave like just like a the cast or and oil. the smell like it'll be like a certain smell yeah I love the smell of sunscreen oh, you do you love it it literally a teacher asked me what's my favorite smell it's sunscreen it reminds me of summer it does remind me of summer okay we're not gonna get into what, <laughs> okay. what it reminds me of but yeah, yeah i'll tell you all <laughs> really not a firm believer until literally like that happened and I'm like okay maybe I should so I started doing like um shea butter and coconut oil mm -hmm. and I know they say coconut oil is like a, a mild sunscreen it, it, for um your skin so I was like okay I'm gonna start doing coconut oil but then I was like okay I'm gonna do something better because I feel like coconut oil it, it protects but only for so long yeah so I started really cooking me girl I feel like yeah. you get more toasty yeah I, and I don't really mind getting a nice tan because I love like I love it mm -hmm. but um i feel like this sunscreen protected like just like the damages of the uv rays okay of my skin so that's something that i really like appreciate and i was like you know i 
I seen that it was black girl and I was yeah. like, okay, you Where know, did you find it? Target. So Target. you guys okay. can find this at hopefully it's at most in all targets, but I found this at my local tar Target and um yeah, it just works good. It doesn't have that weird smell, like like that harsh smell. It has a good. slight smell of it, but it it's doesn't not that. leave a purple cast on your face. Yeah, or on your neck. Cause I usually use it for my neck and like a. My face is really sensitive to stuff, so I put like a thin layer, but mm -hmm. it still protects. And this saved me throughout summer. So if you guys ever need it, it's still hot in LA. I know summer's over, but it's hot. make sure y'all get you guys some black girl sunscreen. No, no, this, this new sun clocking in all over time. <laughs> it is. This is not my new game. It's going to show up every day. Every day and be on you. Yeah. <laughs> every day. So, yeah. Yes. What is your so, black business of? My week? black business of the week is a liqueur lip. Yes. It's a lip gloss brand. If y'all know, y'all know. Mm -hmm. Period. It's. The color is amazing. The most best is, I know that's not a word, do not drag me. Mm -hmm. It's the best of gloss I have tried in so long. It smells amazing. The color pee off. I so I can see. Amazing. Period. It's owned yes. by a black friend, my friend TT. I yes. love her. She's based in LA. She does deliveries. Her prices are so affordable. The lip gloss literally stays on all day. Yeah. Like my favorite one is the clear one. It mm -hmm. has such a high shine. You know, you can never go wrong with clear lip gloss. And yeah, yeah like she's the sweetest. She always supports other businesses. She, yeah, like, she's I love amazing. her. She's yeah. so sweet. Like I cannot wait for her brand to be in Sephora uh -huh. and Ulta. And all these different stores because she really deserves it and she exactly. works so hard on her brand. And look at the packaging, like yes, like look at this. See that. Like beautiful. I need to see this. Like it's amazing. It's amazing like, and just so nice. And it feels so good when you can support a creator that's honestly like such a good person mm -hmm. who tries her best to put out what she um to put out what she gives and yes. it's just like all around like i just love supporting her business so yes find her on instagram at lakira lips mm -hmm. lakira lips and we're gonna Lakira tag them in the, yes. in the uh, caption as well we're gonna tag every business yes uh, so if y'all want some yes. good lip gloss y'all better check my girl out support yes because yeah her stuff is really the bomb like and it really just bomb. it smells Literally, this color is perfect for dark skin, yeah. uh, mid tones, even lighter skin people. And the smell, when I say it's heavenly, it smells so good. It literally looks like it smells like I went and picked this out of a garden and just put a mm. flower on my lip. It smells yes. so good. So yes, please go support. Yes, support her and support the black sunscreen. Y'all know y'all want your yes. skin to be healthy throughout your life and i know y'all want your lips to be popping so yes we're all about hydration over yes, here yes and all about looking good yes. and feeling good and feeling your best self if y'all want to so, feel like some baddies y'all better wear your sunscreen and y'all lip gloss yes. period yes that's a pro tip mm -hmm. so lip gloss sunscreen holiday lashes yes it's no way you go wrong period period Yes, I love that. And okay, love so our last segment of the day is going to be our music corner. Yes. So, should I start? Do you want to start? You can start. Okay, so honestly, y'all, I have not been listening to too much new music mm -hmm. this week. Um, I am in the transition from Tidal to Apple Music. Don't ask why. It's a story for another day. Yeah. But I'm trying to see what have I been listening to that I just can't stop listening to this week. Hmm. It's a little ratchet, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's uh, LA-based rappers, um, Baby Stone Gorillas. Like, they got this song called Baby Girl. I love it. Really? I, I love it. You got to send me it because, you know, from time to time, I like the yeah, yeah, ratchet. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the dabble, but... um. That's good. I feel yeah. like I need more of that type of yeah. You know, that type of vibe. My little sisters keep me up to date. You know, I be feeling like uh, out of the out of the zone a little bit. I used, Same to be a, right. I used to be a sound pound, but now 
you know, I need my little sisters to keep me up to date. But yeah. I really like them. See, they got yeah, this so baby girl song. They it's so funny. They have a clip of somebody that they be beefing with. Uh -huh. and he used to be an actor. And basically in the clip they was like, Oh, where's the gun? He's like, I don't know nothing about no gun, baby girl. <laughs> and they literally <laughs> made that into the chorus. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it, baby girl. So I was just like, that is so funny. I oh love a good troll. Yeah. So yes, that's, that's my funny. music, what I've been listening to. It's a little ratchet, but you know. But check it out. Yeah, no, like, we we love to like turn up at some time. I'm a trap queen. No, <laughs> But um, I love Spotify and I love um, they make like the daily mixes uh -huh. of kind of like what you've been listening to and they make like a playlist of like different songs and songs that you know and songs that you haven't heard. So uh -huh. I listen to my daily mix three. Let me look at who's up in that my daily mix three. Hmm, I'm going to guess it's going to be Frank Ocean. <laughs> you know me too well. Yeah. No, um, so I see some Drake, some Kanye. Oh, yeah. I, love, I love to see some Kanye and Kendrick. I love yeah, it. Kendrick. Yeah, for you. Some um, Division. It's this other artist, and I love her. Her, where I believe it's a her, but her name is BK the Ruler. BK the Ruler, and uh -huh. her music is so good. It's really? like, you don't have to send me that. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to you, but I really like her and her style of music, and that's in my playlist, um, as well. And some, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Do you know Division? 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 Yeah. yeah. Girl, I know I they just came up with a new song, but yeah. I love Division. I did too, but I was like, okay, I know it's the, I was like, is it Division? I don't want to sound stupid. But it's, yeah, Division. I um, can't wait to they, when they come to LA, you gotta go to their concert. Yeah, we should. My sister went, she said she loved really? it so much. Yeah, that was so, so loud. I tried to go. Oh, I yeah. know. I can't remember where. It probably was though, but yeah. she, it was like a couple years, years ago. Years ago, yeah. yeah. I was like, I thought I was the only person who knew about them. I was, that. Was, girl, that day was sold out. I was like, if you'd have told me we'd have been fighting, like, let's <laughs> find these tickets, girl, because I love them. I love really? them for so long. Yeah, like, yeah, I like them. Yeah, they're really that good Drake artists. puts his hands on. I just oh, really? girl, I didn't know that. They're, they're Drake artists. <gasps> I didn't know. Yeah. No wonder they're so good. Right. Yeah. yeah. My hubby knows how to pick them. Yeah, he does. Girl, weekend. He's he brought up the, the weekend. Yeah, um, even um, do you listen to um, Midget Jordan? Yes, yes. I love them. Toronto's finest. Yes. So those are a couple. Like I just like to listen to the daily mix. Um, my daily mixes because it it brings up like songs from people that I do know or songs mm -hmm. from people that I don't know, but it's similar to what I listen to. So I love that. Um, and that's what I love to listen to this week. And that's the end of my yeah. music corner so segment. We hope y'all enjoyed this week's episode. We got yes. into a lot of things. We did. Um, if you guys like, please share with a friend. Please subscribe. Give us five stars. Remember, you can catch us on all your favorite streaming platforms. Yes. Spotify, YouTube. Apple Podcasts, all of that. So mm -hmm. please continue to tune in. Yes. And yeah, this has been New Girls on the Block. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.